Hi everyone, this is a demonstration of the Romer Arm. This particular one is made by Hexagon. It's a great portable unit. You could take it all over the place. It has magnetic locks at the bottom that will hold it to a table. We're going to be testing this part right here. This is known as a NIMS 1 part and it's mounted using a fix kit. You can see it's even supported underneath so that we can get a probe underneath the part. So here we go. This is the base of the Romer arm and right here this is the power button so if you hold it in there it turns off and if you hold it to try to turn it on it won't start but in fact you just have to kind of push it fairly quick and then it comes on and you'll see those three LEDs will cycle through you want to see a green light. Just above that we have this lock mechanism here. It's to keep the Romer arm from falling down or being knocked and having it fall and possibly damage the tip. It should always be locked when you have it just sitting. The Romer arm is made of a bunch of joints. There's six of them. So we can rotate it at the base. If we unlock, you can see we can move it at what I'll call the shoulder. And then we have sort of the elbow here. It can rotate and move up and down. And then also at the very end where the tip is you can rotate that and you can turn that. If you move it to any extreme either fully closed or fully open it will give you an error. Okay so here's the tip. We have some buttons here. A yellow button, a red button, and a white button. The red button when you have the tip in contact with the surface you're going to press that and it will register a hit. The yellow button is the end of a feature and the white button is if you have an incorrect hit you can erase it. The tip here you'll see is an unlockable unit. They're all about the same in length but they have varying sizes of balls. This is a three millimeter ball and you have to align it correctly in order to reinstall it. So there's our three millimeter ball. You can see it's not a very long shank on there. But you do have to line this up properly and there is an index mark before the cam will lock it back in. There are older versions of this tip. There is a legacy style. Also you might notice right at the tip there there's also a little camera and there's a little light. Uh, they can be turned on through the software. And we can rotate it around 360 degrees and we can rotate that. Uh, the head uh, can actually be moved uh, in, in a number of different directions. That's how you're going to hold it right there. It's kind of an uncomfortable grip, but that's the proper way. What we're looking at here is PC Demons. This is the control software for this. You actually would write a program for this or be an operator that executes this program. You can see in the graphics area we have the CAD model uh, of the design. To run a program, we're going to show you this play icon here. This says execute if you hover over it. If we depress that, that starts the program. And it's going to take me a second here to get the camera in position. But you can see here, now it's saying please load the probe 3 millimeter ruby. That's the correct tip for this particular program. We'll just say OK here. And this is actually a, a, a little bar that's going to show you the progress through the program, the execution. And above it we have this message here that says make three hits in the top plane in a triangular fashion. This is an operator comment. This is something you would write into the program so that the operator knows where to place the probe. So I'm going to show you here us making some measurements. Uh, we don't want this thing to be at an angle to the surface. We want it straight up and down or on its side. And then we're going to press the red button to make a hit. We're making three hits on the top here in a triangular fashion. And then we're going to hit the yellow button to complete that feature. All right. We're going through this first step of the program here, which is known as the manual alignment. This requires an operator to come in and make these measurements on three different faces in this particular case. So the top, the front, and the left side of the part are going to be required in order to complete the alignment. And this is a critical step. This is so that the Romer arm knows where the part is and how it's oriented uh, so that it can continue to make the measurements. Without this, it has no idea where the part is and it can't make precise measurements. 
Now these instruments, depending on the arm length, can be more or less precise. If you have a really, really long Romer arm, it is less precise than a very short Romer arm because it's trying to take all those six joints and make sense of them. Now we're looking at the model on the screen here. We're showing this uh, X, Y, and Z, what we call a trihedron on the corner. That's where it should be located, and that's correct. Now we're going to come in and measure this hole. So it's going to take six hits within, three around at one level, and then three uh, down inside at varying levels. I'm just uh, zooming out so you can see the controls here. I'm going to bring the ball in just a little under the surface and measure three hits around on the same plane. And then I'm going to go down further into the hole and get three more and then complete the feature. All right, I'm going to show you the rest of this being measured at twice speed so that you don't have to sit here all day and watch this. But I'm basically just whipping through these in at normal time, but I have this sped up to twice speed so that it doesn't waste your time. So we're measuring the holes, the slots, the sides of that slot. Anything the print has dimensions on, we have to make a measurement within. So a measurement in this case is moving the probe around and taking a number of hits on each surface or in each hole. The software will then coordinate all of that and compare it to the CAD model. The CAD model brings all the dimensional information into the software. We do need to check that that information is correct when we write a program. The operator is then just going to go around and make all these hits as directed by messages on the screen or by a pre-written routine that they work with. And you can see here I'm measuring every side, every single surface around this. I'm even going to bring the arm down so that I can get underneath. All right, so we've now measured every surface here. I even I bumped the plate there, so I mean this is just a demonstration. Normally this would have been fixed a little better. The outcome is this report, and we see our nominal dimension and the tolerances, what we actually measured, how much deviation there is, and if it's out of tolerance. This bar graph shows uh, whether it's green, red, purple, or yellow, you want green to, for it to pass. So that's a quick rundown of the Romer arm. Hope you enjoyed.